How well do you know melanoma? Melanoma is a critical topic in surgery. It's a cancer that we see really frequently. And today I have a handful of questions that are gonna help you nail this topic. If you're studying for your board exams or the abside exam, this will be a perfect review. If you are a totally excited and engaged medical student, this might help you for your board exams, maybe get you a little bit more confident on the wards. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon, and I'm here to scale surgical education, get you more comfortable on the wards, on your exams, in the ICU, and of course, in the operating room. Today, we are reviewing melanoma. Melanoma is a tough one. Whether it's the diagnostic part of it or the treatment part of it, there seem to be a ton of options and a ton of details. So how do you remember it all? Well, today I have a handful of multiple choice questions that I put together, and I'm gonna take you through each of these questions, and then at the end, we're gonna go through all of the answers, we'll go through the explanations. First, I wanna tell you the references that I'm using. So, the reference for cancer, if you're a surgical resident, you gotta be using the NCCN guidelines. All right, you can sign up, it's free, I'll put a link in the description below, but this is the ultimate resource when it comes to understanding cancer. Don't rely on the bullet points in your surgical review book. Pfizer is totally awesome, but it has some incorrectness in there. And so when you're gonna sit your board exams, you're gonna treat patients, you gotta refer to the gold standard, and that's the NCCN guidelines. All right, well, I said it, that's the reference for cancer, that's the reference for this melanoma talk. Let's get into the questions. All right, so the first question, which of the following is not a risk factor for the development of malignant melanoma? Is it age over 60, increased mole count, blistering sunburns, female sex, or a history of childhood cancer? For the second question, which of the following represents the most aggressive form of malignant melanoma? Is it A, lentigo maligna melanoma, B, superficial spreading melanoma, C, acryl lentiginous melanoma, D, nodular melanoma, or E, Hutchinson's freckle. For the third question, which of the following is the minimum acceptable excision margin for melanoma in situ? Is it a cellular margin, so one cell away from the margin? Okay. Is it B, 0.5 centimeters? Is it C, one centimeter? Or D, two centimeters? Or three, no margin needed? For this next question, in which of the following patients would the NCCN recommend a sentinel lymph node biopsy? Is it A, for in situ melanoma, B, a stage 1A melanoma, 0.5 millimeters thick with no ulceration, C, a stage 1A melanoma, that's 0.7 millimeters thick with no ulceration, a stage 1B melanoma, that's 0.7 millimeters thick with ulceration, or E, a clinically positive node. Next, which of the following is an acceptable false negative rate for sentinel lymph node biopsy based on the MSLT1 trial? Is it A, 10%, B, 20%, C, 30%, D, 40%, or E, 50% for a false negative rate? For the next question, which of the following Clark levels represents melanoma cells within the reticular dermis? Is it A, level one, B, level two, C, level three, D, level four, or E, level five? Next question. Which of the following oncogenes is a serine threonine kinase that activates the mitogen activated pathway? Mutations in this particular gene lead to unrestrained cell growth and proliferation. Is it A, BRAF, B, NRAS, C, KIT, K-I-T, D, NTRK1, or E, NTRK2? Which of the following oncogenes are present in 10 to 15% of melanomas 
that are mucosal in origin? Is it A, BRAF, B, NRAS, C, KIT, or K-I-T, D, NTRK1, or E, NTRK2? Next question. Which of the following is not the standard of care for melanoma treatment? Is it A, wide local excision of a stage 1A melanoma, B, frozen section analysis for sentinel lymph node biopsy, C, wide local excision with sentinel lymph node biopsy for a stage 2B melanoma, D, nodal basin ultrasound for regional assessment in stage 3B disease, or E, BRAF testing in stage 3 melanoma. For the next question, Mohs micrographic surgery with greater than 5 millimeter margins is appropriate for which of the following types of melanoma? Is it mucosal melanoma, nodular melanoma, superficial spreading melanoma, lentigo maligna melanoma, or E, none of the above? So for this next question, you have a 45-year-old male who presents with a T2B lesion, and this is a 1.2 millimeter thick ulcerated melanoma. A sentinel lymph node biopsy demonstrates positivity within the parotid gland. Which of the following is the best course of treatment? A, a superficial parotidectomy. B, a total parotidectomy with a complete lymph node dissection of the drainage basins. C is a posterolateral lymph node dissection. D, a superficial parotidectomy with complete lymph node dissection of the associated basins, or none of the above. For the next question, in which of the following stages or stagings of malignant melanoma would you provide baseline imaging assessment for staging? Is it stage 1A, stage 1B, stage 2A, stage 2B, or none of the above. For the next question, which of the following is not a finding of early nodal involvement on ultrasound for malignant melanoma? Is it A, hypoechoic lesions in the cortex, B, asymmetric focal cortical thickening, C, peripheral vascularity, D, calcification, or E, irregularity of the lymph node margin. All right, so I hope you had some fun with those. I put together a handful of questions to help cover the spectrum of melanoma and help you review for not only your exams, but also the ward. Make sure that when you're reading the chapter, when you're reading the NCCN guidelines, that you are picking up some of those important bits. Now, of course, this doesn't cover the entire spectrum of melanoma, but it should give you a good idea on what you need to review. All right, so let's get into these answers. So the first one, which of the following is not a risk factor for malignant Now the first one, which of the following is not a risk factor for malignant melanoma? Well, female sex is not a risk factor. In fact, male sex is a risk factor. And here I have a list of the important risk factors as they've outlined in the NCCN guidelines. So you can see that male sex, age over 60. So there is a phenotypic predisposition. So if you have particular skin patterns or easy to sunburn, the phenotype of having red hair, blue eyes, or that Fitzpatrick type one skin type. And then there is a personal history, so personal risk factors. So if you have a history of multiple blistering sunburns, any history of a skin cancer or a childhood cancer. And then there are risk factors for immunosuppression. So for instance, if you've had an organ transplant or in our immunosuppressed, patients with HIV or other immunosuppressive conditions. And then of course there are genetic predispositions. So there are different oncogenes that you may have a mutation for that will predispose you for having a higher risk of malignant melanoma. And finally, environmental factors such as tanning bed use or chronic sun exposure. So review these risk factors. They can be helpful not only for the exams, but of course when you're taking your history in patients, um, especially patients that are presenting with a atypical nevus or something that you might be worried about that could be a malignant melanoma. Okay, let's move on to the second question. So the second question is, which of the following represents the most aggressive form of malignant melanoma? The answer here is nodular melanoma. So the nodular melanomas tend to be quite deep. And here I've outlined kind of the aggressive spectrum. 
and we can see that the least aggressive is lentigo maligna. Superficial spreading, that's the most common melanoma, and it has what we might say a medium aggressiveness. Acral lentiginous melanoma, that's found in the nail beds or on the palms, the soles of the feet. That's a very aggressive melanoma. A nodular melanoma is certainly the most aggressive form of melanoma. And then Hutchinson freckle, I had a little fun with that one. That's just another name for lentigo maligna, and that is the least aggressive form of melanoma. All right, so getting on to the next question, which of the following is the appropriate minimum excision margin for melanoma in situ? And here the answer is 0.5 centimeters. And the reason I put minimum is because there's a range. So uh, NCCN tells us that the range should be 0.5 to 1 centimeter for a excision margin for melanoma in situ. Now, excision margins are very commonly tested, all right? So we'll go over them quickly here. So for melanoma in situ, you want a 0.5 to 1 centimeter margin. For a Breslow thickness melanoma of less than 1 millimeter, you need a 1 centimeter margin. For a Breslow thickness that's 1 to 2 millimeters, you need a 1 to 2 centimeter margin. For Breslow thickness that is 2 millimeters thick, you need a two centimeter margin. For Breslow thickness, that's between two and four millimeters, you need a two centimeter margin. And then for those that are greater than four millimeters, you also just need a two centimeter margin. For the next question, in which of the following patients does the NCCN recommend a sentinel lymph node biopsy? So that's stage 1B, one millimeter thick with ulceration. Those patients need a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And so which patients need a sentinel lymph node biopsy reviewing the NCCN guidelines? That's going to be patients with high risk stage 1 disease, so stage 1B, 0.76 millimeters to 1 millimeter thick with ulceration or a mitotic rate that's greater than 1. Stage 2 melanoma, so that would be 1 to 2 millimeters in thickness, or stage 3 with in-transit disease. All of these patients have an indication for a sentinel lymph node biopsy. So for the next question, I thought this one was important to consider how large that false negative rate is. So what is the acceptable false negative rate for sentinel lymph node biopsy as stated in the MSLT1 trial? Well, that is 20%. And so here we have a reference for the MSLT1 trial. And this is important because this proved that biopsy-driven management leads to improved disease-free survival and melanoma-specific survival for patients with nodal metastasis from intermediate thickness melanoma. So this is important. You want to read this paper, get familiar with it. It's one of the landmark articles in surgery. All right, let's go to the next question. So the next question gets to the Clark's levels. And this is one of those things you just have to memorize. It shows up on the exams. So for this question, what does it mean if you have melanoma cells down in the reticular dermis? That is level four Clark level. And so let's go over the Clark levels. So level one, that is in the epidermis. Level two is in the papillary dermis. Level three goes down to the junction. So your melanoma cells go down to the junction of the papillary dermis and the reticular dermis. Level four means that the melanoma cells go down into the reticular dermis. And level five is when the melanoma cells go down into the fat layer. Again, one of those things you just have to memorize, but after you've got it, you've got it, and you're ready to ace that question. All right, let's go to the next one. So this next one is on the oncogene. So which one of these is a serine threonine kinase? Now, you just have to know the oncogenes that are associated with particular cancers, and in this one, this is BRAF. So BRAF, there are BRAF-specific inhibitors, and if you have a patient that has a BRAF proto-oncogene, you can use these inhibitors, and that may lead to improved treatment. So let's go through each of these. So BRAF, that is a serine threonine kinase. NRAS is a GTP ACE. KIT is a receptor tyrosine kinase. And NTRK1 and 2, these are also receptor tyrosine kinases. So it's important to know these for the exams. They come up, uh, and it's important to understand not so much the specifics of each proto-oncogene, but it is important to know which oncogenes are specific to what cancers. So this next question, which of the following is found in 10 to 15% of mucosal melanoma? And I have the same oncogenes there. And for this, KIT or KIT, the receptor tyrosine kinase, this is the one that is found in 10 to 15% 
of mucosal melanoma. And so I have a little bit of information on KIT here. So receptor tyrosine kinase, 10 to 15% of mucosal melanoma, so that can be anorectal, vulval vaginal, or in the sinuses. Can also be found in acral lentiginous melanoma, so on the palms and the soles and the nail beds. And it is found in two to three percent of chronically exposed sun areas. So uh, this is one of those proto-oncogenes that you should be aware of. For the next question, so which of the following is not a standard of care for the treatment of malignant melanoma? So you look at all of these, which is the one that isn't a standard of care and frozen section of sentinel lymph node biopsies is not a standard of care. So melanoma in sentinel lymph node biopsy needs to be reviewed with permanent sections by an experienced pathologist, all right? So the rest of these are certainly standard of care through the NCCN guidelines. So for this next question, you have that 45-year-old male with a T2B tumor, ulcerated lesion, sentinel lymph node demonstrates positivity within the parotid gland. What do you do? So the answer is a superficial parotidectomy with complete lymph node dissection of the involved basins. And here, got to know that a total parotidectomy is not necessary as very rarely do you have involvement of that deep parotid gland, but you certainly need to do a superficial parotidectomy as well as a dissection of that uh, involved lymph node basin. Now, if you're using Pfizer as a reference, it's a little confusing because they comment that if you have a melanoma that's greater than one millimeter anterior to the tragus, you have to do a superficial parotidectomy, but I could not find in the NCC guidelines that that's true. It's only true if you have positivity of a sentinel lymph node biopsy uh, within the parotid gland or clinically positive nodes in the parotid gland. So that's where kind of the guidelines and the review books can differ. So in this next question, we get to that Mohs micrographic surgery. Which of the types of melanoma is this uh, indicator? Which can you use it? And you can use Mohs micrographic surgery in lentigo maligna with greater than five millimeter margin. So there is some good literature that will show that Mohs micrographic surgery is safe in lentigo maligna melanoma. So the next question, in which of the following stages would you perform baseline imaging for staging? So which stage is it? Stage 1A, stage 1B, stage 2A, stage 2B, or none of the above? The answer is none of the above. Baseline imaging is indicated in stage three disease or baseline imaging is indicated if there are signs and symptoms specific to um, possible metastasis. So here you can see the baseline imaging isn't recommended for stage one and two disease unless there are signs and symptoms. And then if you are getting baseline imaging, what does that mean? Well, that is a ultrasound of the nodal basins that you're concerned about. It's also cross-sectional imaging of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, as well as a brain MRI. All right, and you can refer to those in the NCCN guidelines for a little bit more information. So for this last question, which of the following is not an early finding of nodal involvement on ultrasound? And the answer here is calcification. All of these other features are found on ultrasound for nodal metastases and malignant melanoma, uh, but not calcification. So if you have those hypoechoic um, irregularities within the cortex, peripheral vascularity, if you have an irregular lymph node margin, those are findings of lymph node metastases, but calcification is not included in that. All right, so those were the questions to cover to review malignant melanoma. I hope you enjoyed that today. Again, my name is Dr. Eric Pearson with Citizen Surgeon, and if you enjoyed this, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and comment. I love to engage with you guys. If you have any questions, ask me. If I left something out, ask me. If there's something that you want, let me know, all right? So, I look forward to seeing you next time. We're going to do a full review of melanoma. It might take a couple of episodes to get through because it's pretty thick material, but I hope this starting segment with doing some questions got you kind of pumped for that. So I'll look forward to seeing you in the comments. Stay safe, study hard.